You're listening to Seattle Real Estate Podcast. The city of Seattle literally spends between 100 and 200 million dollars trying to work on the whole homelessness issue. And it sure doesn't look like much of that works when you go to the Seattle, you go to the outer lying areas of Seattle, downtown Seattle, you go to Ballard, you go to Soto. It's just kind of overrun with tents and stuff going on that in normal neighborhoods doesn't take place. But this is Seattle. This is what we're working with. Let's jump on and let's let's see what is it that we're spending on and why aren't we getting any fixes, according to the former director here. Before we do, my name is Sean Reynolds. If you're new, I own a couple of real estate companies and I read issues like this to you via the news. So let's jump on in. Enough of the chit chat, right? Let's get to it. Let's get to the meat and potatoes. A year ago this month, Jason Johnson, the leader of the Seattle Human Services Department, which manages potentially the largest city budget for homelessness in the Pacific Northwest, announced he would resign. The same day, Mayor Miles away, COVID-19 claimed its first victim in the U.S. in Kirkland, Washington, the Life Whatever It Was Center in Kirkland. Uh, Johnson, who was to be a temporary department head, quickly realized he couldn't step down just yet. Coronavirus turned Johnson's world and the world of everyone who works fighting homelessness upside down, completely changing shelters and making painfully clear the unsustainable number of people living outside in Seattle. I've seen figures from 10,000 or 5,000, between 5,000 to 6,000 to 10,000 to 15,000. I mean, if it's like 12,000 homeless people in Seattle, that is, and that's a whole city. That's bigger than a lot of small towns, right? And these are homeless people living in tents, no running water, no bathroom facilities, and a lot of them have addiction issues. That's not a good combo. Johnson was a controversial leader. He never earned enough votes from the Seattle City Council or support from social services nonprofits to be named permanent director. He clashed with the council on the role of the navigation team, which manages unsanctioned homeless camps and certain tiny house villages. And the navigation team was disbanded as part of the defund the police project. I mean, these are some genius decisions. And uh, we're reimagining, we're rethinking a lot, but we're not not really doing much, just not doing much. While heading the department, Johnson rarely agreed to interviews. And with his exit, basic questions persist about why the city is spending so much money and why the problem isn't getting better. After he left the city job last month, Johnson agreed to talk. This interview has been edited for length and clarity. Seattle Times, in your time at the Human Services Department, the money spent on homelessness totally ballooned. It was almost $90 million in 2018, and this year I believe the budget is $165 million. Now, what you're out, now that you're outside, how do you explain the phenomenon of we're spending more money and the problem seems to be getting worse? That's the thing that I keep seeing. I'm like, are we... Are we really spending 165 million? Are you kidding me? 165 million and this is the end result? To me it's like, oh my gosh, that is some enormous mismanagement. Mismanagement. Or am I just am I just not dealing with reality here? Ah, oh, it costs millions to run that porta potty over there. I don't know. I mean, this stuff is it's just mind boggling to me that that much money can be spent. But again, we're talking about homelessness of 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, something like that to keep all those people going services for all those people. Here's Jason Johnson's uh, response. I think going back to really 2015 or 2016, we have quite literally doubled the investment in addressing homelessness. And part of that has been some major improvements to the homeless system that I'm really proud of. One of that, uh, one that was very expensive, more than double the cost per bed, was transforming our overnight only basic shelter system to one that's 24 seven enhanced with services. So you've just got a lot more infrastructure to deal with, right? It's going to cost more money. When people had a place to keep their stuff, when people didn't have to line up in the rain to be provided a roof over their head overnight, that costs more money. All that said, with 12,000 people experiencing homelessness in our county, 
it was evident that the level of investment that the city was making wasn't enough. It still isn't enough. And there are study after study, and I think most uh, telling is the study by McKinsey, who showed that we need hundreds of millions more dollars for housing units across the country, not just across the county, not just in the city of Seattle, and not just from the city of Seattle, but our system as a whole. Some of my own personal insight is that we are doing this alone. The city of Seattle has to had has had to consistently increase the level of investment in addressing homelessness because no other city in King County is doing the same. The city of Seattle is really bearing the brunt of serving a regional issue with city dollars. That is something that cannot continue. Keep that last paragraph in mind because I'm going to read you what another city that is a little more conservative than Seattle See what they're doing. See how they're handling the issue. What are they proposing? And I'll give you a hint. It's a pretty wealthy town, city of Mercer Island, which is just to the east of downtown Seattle. All right, what are they doing? We're going to take a look at that in our bonus article number two that I'll be reading here in a little bit. And so that is one of the many reasons I'm excited about the King County Regional Homelessness Authority. And I think the intention of the authority is that the governance structure and the CEO and their staff can help right size or balance what's needed across our region to address this issue. And it's going to require, again, much more investment. And that does not mean that it has to require more Seattle investment. It needs investments from cities across the county, and we've got a long way to go before they catch up. Again, we're, we're talking about just kind of spreading this issue around, but what do they need to do to get the whole issue of people living in tents in our parks, living in tents in the streets, on the sidewalks? How do we address that like Johnny on the spot sooner than later? Those are the proposals that I'm like, okay, all we're doing is talking and we're talking about, we're basically talking about, you need to work together. We need more synergy. Well, in, in business, all that talk stuff is good. You might have one meeting for that, but you got to have a plan of action. And I don't really see a plan of action here. I see some sweeps happening every now and then, you know, when things get really out of control. And most all this stuff, it only happens in Seattle, where you've got Seattle leadership, right? So what's the deal? Why, why is that? How come it's happening in Seattle? Why isn't it happening in Mercer Island? Hmm. We're going to find out in a little bit. So Seattle Times, let me just rewind to that 165 million. Correct me if I'm wrong, but very little of that or maybe none of it goes to actual housing. Oh, where does it go? It's mostly services. Some folks have argued, hey, why are we giving all this money to nonprofits? Why don't we just try and get it right to the people who need it? Do you think some of that money is misallocated to a lot of different nonprofits that are trying to help folks off the street, but without anywhere for them to necessarily go. So you're talking about services versus actual housing. You're absolutely right. This is from Johnson. You're absolutely right. That total does not include the capital money that the Office of Housing invests in housing development. What is not working is that providers and advocates have their own relationships with members of city council. And so budget after budget after budget is approved with these sort of pet projects and sometimes even the continued funding of projects that fail to meet standards through a request for proposals. We're funding, you know, de-escalation by hiring former pimps. We're doing some of that. We're, we're just kind of doing what we want to do on stuff willy-nilly without much oversight. Is this really going to work? That's what I think. That's what I think happens. I don't know. I'm not a homelessness expert, but when I go to Seattle, I realize oh, 165 million. That's interesting. Uh, this doesn't this doesn't look like much money is being spent. But I could be wrong. Maybe it's just we need billions of dollars spent on this. I don't know. It seems like there are solutions out there, and that's where we see problems. That's where we see the budget continue to increase, and we continue to see programs that really aren't performing well who aren't centered in equity, continue to be funded by the city. So he's kind of calling out the city saying, hey, you got a bunch of these projects, you got a bunch of these budgets. And you see these projects all the time. You're like, well, that's a cute project. And that's by somebody who is currently, you know, uh, in political favor. 
they're, they're, you know, affiliated with a certain group, and ah, let's give them 150 million bucks, or let's give them 150 grand to go do their yada, 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 whatever. And the rest of us are sitting around going, is that really the best use of that money? Are those people even capable of what the city is saying they're going to do? Should we be doing this? And again, that's leadership issue. That's why we are where we are. And the cities, uh, the streets of Seattle are filled with homelessness, right? So I think our providers do incredible work. And I see that work. And I know they are doing the right things to get people the help that they need. And there are better providers, there's some that are better than others. And with a council who does not stand with the department and the department's processes that we use to make sure that these taxpayer dollars are equitably held, distributed, and then also sort of held accountable, sort of held accountable. No, you need full accountability because of this public investment. And that's where things get really, really messy. There's too many hands in the pot. That's the bottom line. Everybody's got their own idea of how this is going to get fixed. You need some kind of centralized deal to happen. And a lot of this is, it's not an, to me, it's not an affordability issue of housing. It's a drug addiction issue. That's why there's so many people running around in Seattle. They're addicted to drugs. That's why your crime, that's why your property crime has gone up as much as it has. Because you got people who need their next fix. That's the way I see it. When I talk to people, they're all like, oh, yeah, it's not an affordability issue. Granted, affordability is a major concern in Seattle, but in every other West Coast town with property prices that have gone through the roof. That's what on the summit end of things right now, we're dealing with a market that has no inventory. And so my brokers don't have much to sell because it's not out there. And when a property does hit the market, it is a feeding frenzy. But I've told you guys all about that. You know all about that. So the issue of affordability is there. But if you give a drug addict a house and a place to stay, guess what? More than likely, they're not going to want to stay there. Because if there are rules for their requirements to be a member of that housing unit, they're not going to follow them. They want to get high. They want to go do their own thing. So addiction issue, that to me is probably one of the most number one things cities, city of Seattle has got to work on. But what are we doing there? Ah, we're giving them free clean needles. We're just basically enabling the problem even further. And how many people are going to get hooked addicted to these hardcore narcotics that may or may not kill them? Um, because we've made it so accessible. We love our fellow human being. We're just let, willing to let them shoot up, maybe live on the streets. Or they're going to die. We love our fellow human being. Whew, no, thanks. Um, Seattle Times, can you share with me a recent example of where things get really, really messy? Is what this guy's talking about. From Johnson. It's I mean, in the past, but not so long ago. So the city of Seattle through the Human Services Department is the only public funder of the Nicholsville share slash wheel organization, a democratic, but to many homeless people, famously punitive group of homeless and formerly homeless activists who run shelters, tent cities and tiny house villages. United Way has pulled out, which should kind of tell you something. King County has pulled out. That kind of tells you something right there. Yeah, we're not dealing with you anymore. Time and time again, they will participate in a procurement process, they will fail to be funded for reasons known. And then C uh, Seattle City Council will fund them. And we are then forced to contract with them. So that's where you can spend $165 million, not get much money, get, get much bang for your buck. And at the same time, more and more people are coming to Seattle. Seattle leadership has made being homeless a, an attractive occupation because you can just kind of do your thing. Seattle's not going to hassle you. We're not going to do much about it. And if you do get caught for stealing something or stealing from somebody to get your next fix, our criminal system basically says, ah, it's okay. You know what? We're going to give you another chance. Never mind. You've got 42 convictions already. Do better next time, human being. We love you. And uh, go ahead and shoot yourself up on the sidewalk there and then sleep there as well. If you want to take a crap on the sidewalk, go for that too. We're okay with that. Dodging human fecal matter game. That's what we're playing. And that's why so many businesses are leaving downtown Seattle for that very reason. All these things are kind of intertwined here. You kind of see the thread here. 
it's pretty clear. It's like, oof, that's not good. All right. Mercer Island. Mercer Island Islanders. Very expensive community. It's a community. It's an island in between commonly referred to as the east side and Seattle. I-90. It's a freeway system that takes people from the west side of Cascade Mountains over to the east side um, over Snoqualmie Pass, right through the heart of the mountains. So Mercer Island, little island, no, it's not little. I don't know how many people it has, but you know, it's got its own little commercial district, but it's mainly all residential homes, many of them on the waterfront or view properties. Paul Allen had a big compound on the southwest side of the island. It's really expensive, like a tear down there, it's going to run you over well over a million bucks. Um, and that's before you build your, you know, your your mega McMansion, whatever it is. So Mercer Island, what are they doing? Mercer Island Council set to vote on bill banning homeless camping. Mercer Island is saying, ah, no go. Don't camp here. That's not what our area is for. And Mercer Island is, it's conservative. It's kind of like Bellevue, which already has laws in place to handle this. Hey, you you can't just camp in the park. You can't just camp willy nilly. You got zoning laws. We've got actual laws. We're not going to be like Seattle and just let people need to be in shelter somewhere, live wherever they want. That's not how this drill works. So Mercer Island, let's find out what's going on Mercer Island, how they're handling it. Mercer Island City Council will vote Tuesday, that's today, on an ordinance banning the city's homeless individuals from camping in public places. Here's why I agree with that. Public places are not meant for camping. There's a different spot for that, right? That's where those folks should be. I don't know. That seems pretty basic to me. But then again, I'm, you know, more on the reasonable side. And I kind of take the side of homeowners wanting to enjoy their neighborhoods, wanting to enjoy their local parks without having little Johnny step on a hypodermic kneel as he comes off of the slide. You know, that that cool slide that kind of goes, whoop, Johnny jumps off, ah, stuck in the foot with a needle. That's not good. But that's a very real reality in Seattle. I mean, that kind of stuff can just happen all day long. The city would, Mercer Island would instead direct homeless campers to services in neighboring cities like Kirkland and Bellevue, the latter of which has its own ban on camping in public. It would also potentially subject violators to a misdemeanor offense, which comes with fines of up to a thousand bucks and up to 90 days in jail. Sounds kind of harsh, but there has to be consequences for actions, right? That's just how law works. That's how society works. So if you don't want to follow the law, here's what happens. Supporters of the bill point to Mercer Island's inability to provide assistance to its unhoused population as a city that doesn't currently have any established homeless shelters. On the other side of the debate sits the ACLU of Washington, which claims that if the measure is passed, it would make it a crime to be unsheltered and homeless in the city of Mercer Island. Meanwhile, a coalition of community organizations are calling on the council to delay its vote on the ban for 90 days in hopes of inspiring a more expansive debate about how to best serve Mercer Island's homeless population. Let's, let's hold off for 90 days so we can reimagine and rethink. Maybe we'll just kind of postpone this because this is going down a direction that we don't want. We want to look more like Seattle. We want that good downtown Seattle look. We want to look like that's that's where we want to be. Mercer Island, you guys need to take a hard look at, at Denny Park and say, this is what we need. We need tents and all kinds of nonsense going on in our parks. Nah, Mercer Island's already doing their thing. They're like, yeah, no, we're banning, we're banning homelessness living in public spaces. That's what we're doing. And they'll they'll get it. I'm sure they will. At a t- Tuesday's 5 p.m. session, an expected vote, the ordinance appears to have broad support among Mercer Island council members, and I would imagine citizens, indicated by a 6-1 to vote in January that moved it forward to a full vote. Council member Craig Reynolds was the lone no vote. Ah, you got the name Reynolds and you voted no? What's wrong with you, man? Instead, supporting calls for the 90-day delay. 
So Craig Reynolds, you just wanted to reimagine and rethink. Is that what you're doing? I'm not really sure. Doesn't really say, but we're going to imagine. Yeah, reimagine, rethink. All right, let's hold off for something, you know, more supportive. I don't know. Amid this debate, there are added concerns about whether the ban would pass legal muster if it's challenged in court. September 2019 ruling in the U.S. Ninth Circuit District uh, Court of Appeals stated that cities can't enforce bans on camping in public if they don't have available shelter space to offer. And it's unclear whether Mercer Island's plan to refer campers to shelter space in neighboring cities would fulfill the requirements of that ruling. Mercer Island's just going to take its homeless people and they're going to drop them off in Seattle. Let's be honest. That's what they're going to do. Get the undesirables out. That's that is a harsh, harsh reality of what they're going to do. And is that correct? Is that right? I don't know, but it's one way of dealing with it. And it's a concrete thing that's happening. Seattle has just said, basically, come on in, come on in. We're not really going to house you, but we're going to allow you to just do your stuff. And now you're going to roam the streets and just do your thing. And you've made Seattle a kind of a dangerous city in a lot of neighborhoods. Homeless encampments have been at the heart of an escalating debate across Western Washington. A December sweep of a camp at Seattle's Cal Anderson Park saw 20 feet four people arrested for a range of charges from misdemeanor trespass to property destruction. Let's talk about that for one second. So I was there. There's a video on our YouTube channel talking about the cleanup that happened at Cal Anderson Park in December, right? Was that right before Christmas? I think it was maybe Christmas Eve, something like that. And the people that are arrested, they are homeless. And I put those in air quotes, because they are homeless advocates. In other words, they're Antifa, right? I mean, that's just let's just let's just be honest here. And so they were arrested for doing stuff that had nothing to do with really supporting homeless rights. The homeless people, they kind of got the heck out of there, right? I mean, they're used to being swept out. They don't really want to do anything until the very, very last minute. Because why would they? Why move until you're forced to? Like Mercer Island is talking about doing. All right, we're going to force you. When you start here being homeless, that's a no go. You're out of here. Go somewhere else where there are services. Over a month later in Bellingham, four people were arrested during a homeless camp sweep outside of Bellingham City Hall. People get arrested at these deals all the time because it's just such a big outrage. Oh, you're sweeping people. Okay, but they're living in the park. They're living in areas. They're making these other businesses really difficult to stay in business and do their thing. And we got 160 businesses that have left downtown Seattle, right? Some due to COVID, of course. Some probably just couldn't make it in the business environment there. But most because of crime and violence. So got to get that stuff out of there. Got to get that stuff under control. Until then, you know, cities like Mercer Island, they're going to handle it the way that they're going to handle it. And um, I bet you they vote again, what was it, 61 on that first vote? I bet you they go 61 on the next vote. As this story unfolds, I will let you know what city of Mercer Island does here. But I would guess that they're going to vote again. And overwhelmingly, they will say, yeah, we don't want this stuff going on in Seattle. We don't want that in our city as well. So we're going to take a hard stand. Let's figure this out. But for now, yeah, we don't want people camping in our public spaces. That's just where we're at. Okay, that's it for me. Again, I'm Sean Reynolds from Summer Properties Northwest, Reynolds and Klein Appraisal. Thank you for being here. I'd love to have you subscribe. All right, that's it. See you guys in the next one. Bye for now. to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you'll know when our next video is out.